All right, let's do this. If you all could please give a big welcome to Raghu Chandrasekharan. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Um, and if you're going to be patient with me for the next 15 minutes, you're going to be rewarded with a drone. So, so please stay put for the next 15 minutes. Thank you. Appreciate you all coming. And um, today I'm going to talk about some of the use cases that we have implemented with Lambda over the years. Uh, so how many of you have implemented Lambda in your enterprise already or in your product? Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, was, 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 Cognizant has been working with AWS since the beta phase of uh, Lambda. And as you all know, I mean, uh, uh, Lambda is based on serverless computing paradigm. And it, it was, it's a developer's delight to use Lambda. And um, uh, since, since the advent of uh, serverless computing, um, some of the popular use cases um, which, which we're waiting for something like this, I mean, lend itself to Lambda. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit. And okay. Okay. So what is AWS Lambda? So I know some of you already know what it is, but just, just wanted to make sure that, I, uh, uh, that, uh, that all of you understand what Lambda is. So Lambda, like I said, is based on serverless computing. And um, five key things. One is it runs your code in response to events, events of AWS services like S3. I'm going to talk, talk about that in a little bit. Zero server administration. So you don't have to worry about provisioning and maintaining your servers. Okay? Run your code, build your code in Python or Java, or .NET, C Sharp, upload it to your server. You don't have to worry about the server administration, provisioning. Built in high availability. Flexible scaling, so you don't have to design or de your deployment architecture for high availability and scaling. It is built into Lambda. Okay, so in response to throughput and memory, uh, it can scale and no idle capacity. So you're going to run your code, uh, the servers are provisioned and it shut down. Okay, because Lambda is made for um, short running tasks. Okay, this is Lambda. So the common enterprise use cases that we implemented for a lot of customers. I know Lambda has several different use cases, but um, these six use cases are very popular with our customers. Uh, the first use case that we implemented uh, about a uh, couple of years back uh, was disaster recovery. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Cloud operations. So once uh, you're maintaining your cloud infrastructure, uh, like your backup and restore operations, uh, any changes to your infrastructure, uh, how do you recognize that? Lambda is, Lambda, Lambda is used for that. Cognizant runs thousands of servers, uh, AWS servers for our customers. Um, uh, we, uh, we, administer, uh, we administer those servers, and um, uh, these servers are integrated with our ITSM tool, which is uh, just a service now. And we have a monitoring and management platform. And we use Lambda to detect any changes to the infrastructure. So I'm going to be talking about that. Data Lake, classic use case, use case for Lambda. How many, how many of you have used Lambda for data lakes? Anybody? Right. Thanks. Thanks. OK. Uh, CA, CD. OK, uh, although AWS uh, has a lot of native tools, and you have tools like Jenkins, others. But Lambda can be used for your continuous integration deployment. Uh, I see that you have used Lambda for CA, CD as well. Okay. Real-time data processing. Uh, anybody has used Lambda for that? All right, great. And microservices. Uh, again, classic use case. So we'll spend some time on these things. And uh, let's, we can make it interactive. I mean, if you have any questions or if you want to share your experience, uh, we, uh, we can do that. So disaster recovery. Um, there are different, different uh, disaster recovery patterns, like pilot light, pilot light um, um, and other uh, AWS patterns. And in any disaster recovery scenario, you have your primary site and a secondary site. Any changes? to your primary site. Say, for example, in a pilot light scenario, you're going to have a very, very minimal implementation of your, prim of your primary uh, data center architecture. And any changes to your primary data center configuration, right? For example, if there is change in code, if there is a change in jar file, or um, uh, you want to do, if there is change in your database tables, you want to do a backup and restore. Uh, it's event driven, OK? For example, I mean, just, this is one sample architecture, OK? For example, you have your EC2 instances, and you configure with CloudWatch, okay? And then you look for, a, a, um, uh, you can tr you trigger an event in CloudWatch 
for looking for a pattern in your log files. For example, a new jar file is available, or any code has changed, uh, you, would, uh, you would persist to a log file. And then CloudWatch would trigger an event, and Lambda would listen to that. It's Lambda, like I said, it's an event-driven programming. And, um, and then once a uh, new code is available on S3, again, um, after, I mean, after it is built and deployed, it can be S3 or Artifactory. And what you would do is um, uh, you would persist that, I mean, you would save that uh, var file after continuous, continuous integration and build onto your S3. An event is fired. And then uh, you can copy, uh, you can write a Lambda function to copy that into your secondary. And then you can invoke your cloud formation scripts um, to build the AMI and deploy it on secondary, on your secondary data center. Same with database as well. So in a nutshell, Lambda is used to listen to events of changes in code. Here, in this case, is S3, and any changes in your database. And both are synchronized with your secondary data center. Uh, the, uh, the AMA is built on response to events and deployed through cloud formation. So this is something that we've implemented with many customers. Um, um, so I mean, um, anybody can relate to this? I mean, is this a, sim a very similar pattern that you've implemented? OK, all right. Next is Data Lake. Uh, um, I know we, I mean, Andy Jassy's presentation, um, we talked about, I mean, he talked about data lakes. Um, S3 is a very popular uh, data lake. Um, and uh, most of our, many of our customers are adopting AWS just for the data lake uh, um, uh, sit uh, situation. And um, when you copy your files, uh, your structured and unstructured data to S3 uh, from your on-prem data sources, um, so what we typically do is we set up a Lambda function, depending upon the file size, and then um, um, either using data pipeline or uh, S3 upload, we take it to a staging layer, and then again we trigger a Lambda function to, uh, to bring up EMR clusters to process the data, to, to do the um, uh, uh, normalization and ETL of that, and then before we persist that into a DynamoDB or Aurora. So very classic use case. Um, uh, two Lambda functions in a data lake scenario, detecting the source file that has just come in, and also invoking your EMR clusters or any other ETL job that, that you would want to invoke uh, to process the data. So um, uh, can you guys relate to that? And, I mean, I, I know you, you worked on that. OK, thanks. thanks. The third sample architectural pattern is microservices. Um, Microservices, um, as we'd appreciate, it's a very good architectural pattern where you would build a decoupled software architecture. And um, um, so, f I mean, some of the services can be short running services. Long running services, uh, you can deploy it onto a container on ECS. But for the short running services, you can use Lambda uh, through an API gateway. So the endpoints, um, um, the, rest, uh, the rest APIs endpoints uh, can be managed through API gateway. And then uh, API gateway can invoke. Uh, those services on Lambda. So this, we have implemented this in many of our customers where we would not do all of the services in a container-based scenario. Short running services, we do it on Lambda. So any of you have implemented microservices using Lambda in API Gateway? All right, thanks. So these are the three popular use cases. I'm going to talk about cloud operations in a bit. Like I mentioned, we run a large fleet of AWS servers for our customers. Typically, what happens is once we onboard a customer onto our platform, say, for example, customer A has 500 EC2 compute instances, and we have onboarded to Cognizant monitoring uh, platform. And also, the um, infrastructure information is stored in ServiceNow. And uh, when, the, when the users add new servers, okay, we trigger a Lambda event. And then any changes to the infrastructure is persisted in our configuration management database. So you keep your configuration management database that is outside of your AWS environment in sync with, uh, with, with your infrastructure. Similarly, backup and restore operations, any changes in database, we do a restore uh, backup. We do a backup through Lambda. So um, see, Lambda is, is, at the, is at the heart of our cloud operations. So, so these, are the, um, these are the popular use cases that we have done. And um, um, uh, we, uh, we can make it interactive. Um, so if you have any questions on um, a Lambda usage, I mean, I'll be more than happy to use. Um, so uh, have any of you used any other, I mean, are, uh, are there any other use cases that you have used Lambda for, uh, apart from this uh, in an enterprise? Um, you, can build, uh, you can build static websites using Lambda. 
and um, of course, um, IoT classic use case uh, for Lambda. Uh, but uh, these are the popular use cases that we that we continue to push to our customers. So.